carefully, sir. Are these the two men who shot you? He said no. Take another look, sir. The Hurricane is a story of triumph in the face of adversity. You are sentenced to be imprisoned for the remainder of your natural life. I'm innocent. I've committed no crime. Crime's been committed against me. It's the story of Reuben Hurricane Carter, who was a boxer in the 60s, who was, was this close to winning the middleweight title when he was accused of a triple murder. Denzel Washington trained for more than a year to look like a professional boxer. He wanted to be a boxer and go out there and act the role, opposed to being an actor, go out there and, and, and box. <laughs> But the makers of the hurricane had some fighting of their own to do. The film was publicly attacked for falsely portraying real-life people and events. Your Honor, this case was built on a foundation of lies. This very good story the Canadians wrote, I mean, it was a very good story, you know. But it's all, it's total fiction based upon a true story. This is the story of the hurricane. He put me in prison. Love's gonna bust me out. Hello, I'm Larry Day. Welcome to Filmography, a behind-the-scenes look at the biggest movies ever shot in Canada. The Hurricane tells the story of Reuben Hurricane Carter, a boxer who spent 20 years in a New Jersey prison. Bob Dylan wrote the song Hurricane uh, after going to see Carter in prison and listening to some pro-Carter people, and that was the extent of his, um, of his investigation. Cal Deal is a former journalist who covered Carter's case for the Herald News in Passaic, New Jersey. But unlike Carter's celebrity friends, Deal wasn't convinced the hurricane was innocent. So we went down to prison, uh, we sat down with Carter in this little rec room, and uh, he was good. He was very uh, friendly and very persuasive, and he had good arguments and, uh, and made a great case for himself. And I was going in there thinking he's probably innocent. He's friendly. He talks a good game. Uh, we listen to everything he says. We record it all. But then we check it out. And this is what the press people don't do. They don't go back and check out what he's saying even today. Through his research, Deal gathered police reports, testimony, and public documents. And when Carter's story was adapted into a movie, Deal posted his findings on a website. The only reason I did it was because it felt like the right thing to do. Uh, uh, I knew that I could provide a voice for the families and, and the people who were hurt by all the publicity of, from Dylan and whatnot in the 70s. And, uh, and I knew that this could be a good way to counter the inevitable. In 1976, Artis and Carter's convictions were overturned. A new trial was granted. He got the second trial because of the work of his lawyers, who were very, very upset that the movie didn't get the, give them adequate credit. Uh, but uh, they worked every nook and cranny of the system that they could possibly think of and eventually, you know, got a court ruling. And the lawyers were very upset that they didn't get credit. You know, they were sort of almost an afterthought in the movie. And uh, the reason that Carter got out of prison was uh, the work that his attorneys did, not what the Canadians did. The attorneys found legal procedural things to justify getting him out, and the judge bit. Who anybody to trust? Many still believe Denzel's performance in The Hurricane is more worthy of the Oscar. Many, but not all. Denzel didn't deserve the Oscar. Not because it wasn't a good acting job. Denzel was brilliant in it. Edward Luzzi is a public relations representative in Beverly Hills who lobbied Academy voters to not vote for Denzel. We had a campaign that was one thing in mind, and we had a picture of Denzel Washington holding an Oscar and we had a big red cross through it, you know, just like the street sign, which was our goal, to, not, to make sure he doesn't get that Oscar. He would have won the Oscar, I think, if we didn't intervene, if the family and the victims of Reuben Carter didn't intervene. Luzzi was helping the family of real-life detective Vincent DeSimone. The Patterson, New Jersey police officer worked on Reuben's case 
and he was a father figure to Lucy, who lived only two houses away. This was a kind man. This was a man that was into racial equality. This was a guy that was uh, just a, a good, good Christian American hero. Totally the opposite of what it was portrayed. Can you believe that black punk? He thinks he's champion of the world. So when they portrayed Vincent de Simone as this racist animal that had to manipulate things to get this guy thrown in prison for no reason, it really upset the family and it disgraced me because people that don't know the De Simones who are living in Ohio or, I mean, the, people were actually looking. They were getting hate mail, they were getting calls, they were, people were driving by their home, throwing stuff out on their lawn. It was, it affected people that are alive. The influence of politics on Oscar voting is a touchy issue. And in the case of the hurricane, it's still unclear whether the film's negative publicity cost Denzel an Academy Award. I have absolutely no idea how the, the machinations of the politics, as I said before, at that point, really, they're all extraordinary actors, so it's a, a negative spin to put on something like that. I've done three or four films now, four films now about real life people, and I've never seen a film attacked to the degree that that film was, and, and, and I didn't think it was justified. I, I don't know who had what agenda, but I still stand by the work, and, and I always will. Now, you do want to get out of here. Bad PR wasn't the only problem Universal Pictures encountered following the release of the hurricane. They were sued by boxer Joey Giardello for defamation of character. The allegation there was that they didn't accurately depict his boxing match with Hurricane Carter, that that Carter sort of is, pummeled him in the movie, but that's not what happened in real life. My impression was that Carter did very well. I mean, he definitely did a good job. Uh, but the movie makes Giardello look much worse than I think he was in reality. And Carter himself has stated publicly that Giardello won the fight and he's done that in recent years after this all became a controversy. The suit was settled out of court. Their uh, freedom of expression really allows filmmakers down there to, I think, say and do uh, more than you could up here. The, the laws on, for example, defamation are way more um, what I'd call defendant-friendly than plaintiff-friendly. That in, in, in the States, essentially, you can say anything you want about someone unless you actually know it to be false. The hurricane now features a disclaimer informing viewers that many of the characters and events in the movie have been altered. Reuben Carter also tours the lecture circuit. He has more time to do so now after resigning from the association in the defense of the wrongly convicted following a dispute with the board of directors in August of 2004. I've never seen a film attacked to the degree that that film was, and, and, and I didn't think it was justified. I, I don't know who had what agenda. He would have won the Oscar, I think, if we didn't intervene, if the family and the victims of Reuben Carter didn't intervene. If you start fictionalizing, where you run into problems is if that fictionalizing creates a more sort of negative impression. I still stand by the work, and, and I always will.